So next we want to discuss how to compute homology, singular homology systematically. And the tool for that is called cellular homology. The problem with singular homology or the problem with computing singular homology in a direct way is that the singular chain complex is a huge complex. It's a free abelian group of uncountable rank unless the space is say a finite set of points. So there is no way we can compute explicitly the singular homology from the singular chain complex. Cellular homology gives us a smaller chain complex which is most often finitely generated, consists of finitely generated abelian groups and which computes also singular homology. So let's define it. in the generality of a relative ZW complex that XA be relative ZW complex and for such ZW complexes we have the definition of the cellular chain complex We will denote it by C star CW. And as a group, well, let's say in degree n, it is just the homology. In degree n of xn xn minus 1. Right, so with the relative CW complex we have a filtration into scalar term which are called x0, x minus 1 is actually equal to a and then we have x0, x1 and so on and this relative homology is by definition the nth chain group. So somehow a bit surprising that we form an chain complex out of homology groups, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And, and then, here one also sees that it's important that the filtration by skeletal is part of the structure of a CW complex, because one want this to, wants this to be a functorial construction. So we are only using the filtration by skeletal to get um, right. this, this R module. Right. So we're not using the pushouts, which were not part of the structure. Let me add uh, one more comment. So HN. If, if, we, if we write HN without any uh, further uh, mentioning, then it's always single homology. But the definition I do here actually works for an arbitrary homology theory. So I could define this, and maybe we should. Work with an arbitrary homology theory. Although in our use cases it would always be singular homology, but possibly singular homology with coefficients. Not just C coefficients, could be Z mod 2 coefficients like we saw on the proof of borsuk ulam But um, it will, in our application, be a homology theory satisfying the dimension axiom. It will be actually singular homology. But this works in general. And then uh, we suppress it in the notation, but of course the cellular chain complex is associated to this homology theory. Well, maybe I'll write it like that. <clears throat> All right. What is the differential? I, have, I claim to have a chain complex, so I should have a differential. And the differentials are the boundary homomorphism of the triple sequence xn, xn minus 1, xn minus 2.
as differentials. Recall that this was something that worked for arbitrary homology theories that whenever we have that we get a triple sequence for such a nested sequence of subspaces. But I will recall what, what it uh, is explicitly in case you forgot the, um, this, this triple sequence. And we should also have an explicit look at the definition of the boundary homomorphism to see that it really gives us a differential for this uh, chain complex so that um, applied twice we get zero. And maybe it looks confusing because on the left hand side you have the A and on the right hand side there is no A but the A is implicit there because the minus one skeleton yeah as a reminder right. is so A. So we call X minus one is A in yeah. the definition of a relative CW complex. Yeah. Yeah. And what one sees from this here already is that only the zeroth chain module depends on A, the other ones, I mean, don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the homology of this chain complex is by definition the cellular homology of this CW pair X comma A. Again, associated to the uh, given homology theory. And we will denote it by H star CW of X comma A. So that's the definition. Now to understand this definition, Let's have a closer look at the differentials of this chain complex. The differential starts from Cn Cw of x comma a, so this is by definition Hn xn xn minus one. And then the boundary homomorphism in the triple sequence is obtained by first going to Hn minus one xn minus one, so this is just the boundary homomorphism, the usual long exact sequence of the pair xn xn minus one, and then going further to by the inclusion or map induced by inclusion to xn minus one xn minus two. And then what we have is by definition this composition is the differential in the cellular chain complex well at degree n. Now Let's apply it once more. Then we would go here to Hn minus two of Xn minus two, and then include into Hn minus two, Xn minus two, Xn minus three. And that would be the N minus first differential in the cellular chain complex. So why do we have a zero here? Or why is this composition of these two zero? Well, this can be seen from the composition that we see here, from here to here. Because what you see here is a composition of two successive maps in the long exact sequence of the pair x and minus one, x and minus two. And this is zero. And therefore already here we see that this is zero and therefore the whole composition is zero. So we do have a differential and we do have a chain complex um, as implicitly claimed in the definition above. So I told you that the, the, the good thing about the cellular chain complex and cellular homology is that we get a smaller chain complex. Unlike the singular chain complex, we get a chain complex um, which consists of finally generated abelian groups in many cases. So let's investigate a bit further how these chain groups, so these Hn, Xn, Xn minus one, do look like. Maybe before you go into that, I have one question. Can you bring up? Shall I bring it yes, up? Yeah. Yes. So instead of the composition you, we were using here to define the differential, we could also use the boundary homomorphism in the triple sequence from xn, xn minus one to xn minus one comma a. 
yeah? And then include in the next step also, again, in the inclusion in the triple sequence. That's of the, the This is, was my question. Is it the same? And if yes, why? So, all right. So you want to go, let me first write what you want. Mm -hmm. You want to go like that, and then you want comma to go... A. Com I go to hn minus 1, xn minus ah. 1, comma a. Right. Apply the, the boundary the morphism. Boundary morphism in the triple sequence. In, this, in the triple sequence, all right. And then you have an, an inclusion in another triple sequence, namely the one of yes. xn minus 1, xn minus 2, comma a. Yes. Yes, and I'm, I'm, they should be the same. This should be the same. So let's uh, discuss it, why this is the case. Maybe let's separate it a little bit from this argument because that's, a, that's a, like a side remark. I'm asking this because it's going to be important in the next video. So <laughs> I should clarify this. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's think about it. Um, and to do that, we have to spell out what we have here. We have to spell out the, this triple boundary homomorphism. Mm -hmm. But um, let's do that. So what it is, is going to hn minus 1, xn minus 1 in the, taking the boundary homomorphism of the pair sequence mm -hmm. and then take the inclusion or the thing induced by, let me be a bit sloppy with the notations maybe, but this is the, the definition of that. And then we have a further inclusion there. Now, what we do here, up there, the blue arrow, mm -hmm. we start with the same boundary homomorphism, the pair sequence, but then we take the inclusion to, or the map induced by inclusion right away to mm -hmm. xn minus one, xn minus two. Here, we do this in two steps. So this mm -hmm. map, which is induced by the inclusion, is the same as first include yeah. into the pair x and minus a a and then include further into x and minus so this commutative one, x diagram and minus two and that explains that's why it's the same excellent okay that's the same yeah mm -hmm. all right it's good to remember that mm -hmm. all right so now i want to um, investigate this this group so what can we say about CNCW x comma a. And to formulate what I want to say, we choose now a push out. Remember, I mean, I'm just repeating what you said before, that the definition of the cellular homology just involved the structure of a CW complex. The so CW complex is a space together with a filtration into skeleton and this skeleton belong to the structure. What does not belong to the structure is the choice of push-outs um, describing this skeleton. And later on, you will see that this corresponds to what people call choosing orientation of cells. But now we will, um, for the purpose of answering this question, we will pick uh, push-outs. So choose push-outs. I take I n as the index set of all n cells. <clears throat> right, so we, we, we choose these push-outs for every n. <clears throat> And you see that on the left-hand side, so this arrow here, this is even a close neighborhood, uh, how do you call it? Close neighborhood retract. deformation retract. Yeah, it's like the nicest form of inclusion. And the case Sn minus one into Dn, this is like the, the most important situation if we have that. And whenever we have that, then this is of the same kind as we know. And we also know that we have a version of excision um, in that situation, namely the homology or the relative homology of the left-hand side is isomorphic to the relative homology of the right-hand side and the isomorphism is induced by this 
uh, maps, the horizontal maps in the pushout. Yeah, what do we get out of that? We get a description of not only h and x and x and minus one, but also description of h k x and x and minus one. So this relative homology is the same as the relative homology of the left hand side in the push out. All right, so now I want to assume that, I mean, if I have single homology, I know that single homology not only satisfies additivity, the additivity axiom for finite um, co-products, that's always the case, and that's something we could conclude from the axioms, but it, in, in addition, it satisfies this additivity axiom for arbitrary co-products, for arbitrary topological sums, even if the index set is a infinite or even uncountable. And if you don't have single homology, we now at least want to assume at that point that the homology theory satisfies the additivity axiom. Because then we can pull this out and write it like that. So I think strictly speaking, we formulated the additivity axiom for absolute homology, but it's one application of the five lemma that one can also use it like this in relative homology. Ah, okay. Yeah, I uh, forgot about that. <laughs> but you're right. It's just, uh, it's an easy application of the five lemma. All right. Now we can say a bit more about the group that we have here. So. We saw in the computation of homology of spheres, and again, so far we haven't used the dimension axiom that the boundary map in the, in the long exact sequence, which then goes to h k minus one reduced of h n s n minus one, is an isomorphism. And then we're here. Now I want to apply the suspension isomorphism. Suspension isomorphism says that if you have the reduced homology of the suspension of a space, then this is isomorphic to the homology in one degree less of the original space. Now, a sphere, an n minus one dimensional sphere, is just an n minus one fold suspension. Therefore, the homology that you see here is isomorphic by the suspension isomorphism to, well, what is it? It's H, a reduced homology of K minus N of S0. S0 is just topological sum of two points. And if we build H uh, reduced of that, then the inclusion of, say, yeah, the left point give us an isomorphism with h k minus one, uh, k minus n, I'm sorry, non-reduced of the point. Okay, so this is induced. Here is a choice. Uh, I can take the inclusion of the left or the right point. In any case, you make a you make a choice here, say, induced by inclusion of the left point. Well, S0 thought as a subset of mm -hmm. R. So one point is minus one and the other point is one. Yeah, we should just fix the choice once and for all right. so that we remember yeah. that everything it really depends on is the choice of pushing. I mean, right now I'm only interested in, to, in seeing how this group looks like, but mm -hmm. later on uh, mm -hmm. we will see how to systematically compute it and then we want to fix such an isomorphism after fixing a choice of the pushout. So given a choice of the pushout here, we get an isomorphism of h, k, x, and x and minus one. Um, to this sum of homologies of the point. Mm -hmm. So in particular, if oh, maybe in black, if 
h star also satisfies the dimension axiom. Then we have no non-zero homology of a point outside degree zero. And therefore, we can say that hk of xn, xn minus 1, is the sum if k is equal to n and is 0 if not. And if h star is a single homology, we can rewrite this a little bit further and say, well, what do we have? Then we have here just uh, three abelian groups of rank one, so C's, copies of C, and a free abelian group whose rank is the cardinality of the index set IN. But IN is the same cardinality as the cardinality of the set of N cells. So we could, as an abelian group, also write HN, XN, XN minus one, which is by definition our nth group in the cellular chain complex as the free abelian group on the set of n cells. Yeah, that's definitely way better than in the singular <laughs> right, complex. Right, right. So in particular, if you have a a uh, CW complex that has finitely many L cells, we get finitely generated free abelian group uh, as a chain group of the cellular chain complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, next we will learn how to compute this cellular chain complex and learn also how to deal with computing the differentials. Yeah, and, and we will verify that it computes the same homology as the singular homology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't and said that. <laughs> I think you didn't. In the, uh, right. After we did that, after we've yes. done that, we will compute yeah. and learn how to. Right. Uh, we want to show that the cellular homology is isomorphic to the homology of your mm -hmm. space.